Welcome to the study of God's Word, recorded live from Calvary Chapel in Aurora, Colorado. To learn more about the many resources available through Abounding Grace Media, visit us online at calvaryaurora.org or download our free app on all platforms. And now, let's open our Bibles and study God's Word. When Pastor Ed sent me a text, and he says, hey, Sergio, this is what he says to me. Hey, Sergio, are you able to teach for me on Wednesday, main service? And he says, in English, <laughs> I realized that our God has a sense of humor, you know? I was like, oh, oh. And I was working, I remember when he texted me, and I was like, I don't know, I was thinking everything, but nothing but to say yes or no, you know, I was thinking of that. But I, I, I definitely, when I, I grab my phone and I text my, uh, my pastor, Pastor Ed, back, I, I, said, I said it like this. I said, you're, you're, not going to, you're not going to believe this, Pastor Ed, but last night, and this is literally, this is, this is true. Last night, I was dreaming that I was speak, uh, sharing the word in English in the church. And I wake up my wife. And I wake up my wife and I say, honey, I'm, I'm, I'm teaching in English right now. And guess what? It's perfect. No accent. <laughs> and my wife is like, oh, just go to bed. Go to, go, go to bed. And the next day, that was when Pastor Ed texted me this, this message. And I say, all right, Pastor Ed. Humbly, I say, yes, but listen. You're, I say, you know, my English is broken. But, so, I just want to be a helper. If you say, I need to do this, I'll do it, Pastor Ed. That's what I say. And, and he says to me, he replied back, he says, oh, you'll be okay. And that was it. And I'm like, oh, my God, this is real. This is happening. You know, and, and I was like thinking the rest after my lunch at work, like I was thinking, oh, my Lord, Really? Are you going to do this in English? You know, but, you know, as, as we pray tonight, you know, we have to be obedient for that, for that call that you have in your heart, right? I know it's sometimes you be, you, you, there is, there is uh, uh, what is it? I'm afraid sometimes. But when we pray, the Lord give the, gives you the boldness that you need to speak his word. Because what is, what is it that does the work is the word of God. It's not my words, but the word of God, right? So I... I never, I never imagined, I never imagined in my life sharing the gospel in English behind a pulpit. I can do it in my workplace. Oh, I share the gospel with my co-workers. Oh, no, you, you, I'll do it, no problem. You know, I can do it anywhere. I can go to the supermarket and share the gospel to anybody. But behind the pulpit, I never imagined in my life that I will be right here. But if I am over here, it's because since the very beginning of my life and since the very beginning of your life, God has a plan for you. In my life, started in 1985, and I'm gonna ask them to put my first picture over here on the screen. You see that car over there? It was 1985 when that car came to my little town in Mexico. My cousins who already live in the United States, in Santa Ana, in California, they drove the car to Mexico, and they were like doing circles over there in my little town, like 15,000 people, you know, they were driving around with that car, and I was just sitting in one of those little plazas in my little town in Mexico, and I saw that car, and I go like, oh my God, that's a beautiful car. That must be nice to own one of those, right? Because when you grow up really poor, you got nothing. My family never owned a car. Whatever car, you know, no, you name it, what, whatever kind or year, never. We never own a car. I learned to drive here in the United States because we never own a car. But when I saw that car, I was like, oh, my gosh, that would be nice to have one of those. I was 17 years old when that happened. But obviously I was not a believer. In fact, all my childhood, all my childhood, this is how I felt. I felt that God forgot about me. I feel that God forgot about my family. You know, I grew up thinking that I was an outcast. That's how I grew up. It started with my father. Um, when my mother, my mother has only one husband, and the other five guys in her life, they never married her. They only took advantage of her innocence. 
and, and all of us born, you know, one was mine of them. One of those guys was my dad. And I was calling my sister to get the facts right. And I said, what did my dad say when he found out that my mom was praying with me? And my, my sister says, oh, he says he doesn't want nothing to do with you. He rejects you from the womb. He says, I don't want nothing with that kid. I don't want to do nothing with that kid. And I remember when I was old enough, maybe like seven or eight years old in elementary school, I asked my mom, because I noticed that my cousins, everybody have a dad. You know, I noticed everybody, you know, my, all my cousins have a dad. And also all her siblings, my mom's siblings, everybody have a, like a stable family. And I, but my, my mom, you know, why, I mean, I know we're different, but, w w you know, why? And I started asking those questions. And my mom says, when I ask her, she says, don't worry about your dad. She says, he doesn't want to do nothing with you. He doesn't love you. He doesn't want you. You know, that's how mom, like Latino moms always share news like that, right? Straight, you know. They don't, they don't go like make, looking beautiful. No, they just go straight like that, you know. And, and I was, like I said, seven or eight years old. And, and I was sad. And I feel like, you know, nobody likes me. Nobody wants to hang out with me. Nobody, nobody cares about me. And I was growing up in, in a little town in Mexico and. And my mom, she was like a really hard worker, and she has no time for us. So many people, including sometimes my, sometimes my little brother, you know, people took advantage of us because we don't have nobody to go to. My little brother, he's from another dad, and his dad left him when he was five. And so, you know, we all grew up like that, and we have no place to go, no place to go and, and, and get help and, and, and get an answer for all the questions you have as you grow up, right? So... A lot of people took advantage from us, and because all my siblings, the older ones from the, from the first uh, marriage of my mom, they were like far gone. They got married and, and moved on to a different city. So I decided to move to the big city, right? As a little, you know, a guy who was born in a little town in Mexico, I was like, I want to go to Mexico City. I want to move to Mexico City. My, my life is going to be better over there. Besides, I want to run away from this. I want to run away from these memories, from everything that is going around in my town. And my life still, when I was a teenager, I, it was not right. I just, want to, I just want to run away. I remember when I was in high school, I was living with my my older stepbrother, and, and I got into so, many, so much trouble, especially my last year, especially my last year, my senior year. And I was in so much trouble that I asked my brother, I said, hey, uh, can you help me to go to America? Can you give me some money? I want to go to America. I want to, I want to see what's up there. I want to change, uh, maybe I want to change something over there. I don't know, but I was, I was asking for help to come to America. And my brother says, no. He says, get your grades up, you know. Study. But you're, gonna go, you're not going to go to the United States. And I, 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 call, I remember I called my mom. And I says, mom, I really want to leave Mexico. I want to I I go to the USA. I want to go over there. I want to go to America. And my mom, um, she, I don't know how in, the, how in the world she got the money, but she gave me the money. And I told my brother, and he got mad at me. He says, where do you get the money from? I said, well, my mom gave it to me. And so he took me to, to the airport to come to the United States. And these, these ones were his words, you know, to me. He says, well, I guess this is the last time I'm going to see you. Next time I'll see you again, you're going to come back in a coffin, dead. Because, and he was right. The way I was living my life, you know, I, it wasn't right. But anyways... You know, I, I came to, uh, to America and in the late 80s, and when my mom gave me the money and I went to the airport and I, I took off, my mind was like thinking, oh my gosh, maybe the 1981 Camaro can be a, a reality, right? Maybe you can get one of those. That's what I was thinking when I was coming to this, to this country. But moving fast forward, my first car in America, after I was working really hard, really hard. Please you place the next, the next picture, please? That was my car, right? <laughs> it was a 1975 Chevy Vega, right? All beat up. But I love that car. I wash it every weekend. 
shine their, I mean, I put a little uh, armor and those tires. I was like, nice. I was so happy. I was very happy. But something, something didn't change yet. My life, my life is still the same. I've still got the same feelings, the same emptiness, doing the wrong things, hanging with the wrong people, using alcohol, drugs, you name it. I was still, I was still feeling that God forgot about me, just like my earthly father, just like that. This is how I was feeling in those years. I love what Paul wrote to the Galatians. Galatians? That's how you say it, right? I love this verse. Galatians 1, chapter 1, verse 15. I'm going to read it in NLT because NLT is so easy to read English, better than the other ones. So I'm going to read it in NLT, all my verses tonight. But Galatians 5, verse 15 says like this. But even before I was born, God chose me and call me by his marvelous grace. This verse is probably for somebody tonight. Because before I was born, God chose me. God chose you for a reason, for a plan that he prepared for you and for me. This is one of my favorite phrases in the Bible. But God. But God. But God. But Christ. But when. But you know, that's one of my favorite phrases. Because something was lost, but now it's found. Something was dead, but is now alive. A person was blind, but now can see. There was no way, but God made a way. Oh, this, was, this is my, my favorite phrase in the Bible. In 1989... No girl in my life, but God, right? But God. Send me a beautiful girl to my a beautiful girl to my life. She was 18. This is another story that we'll be met, but that's probably another time. But she was 18, I was 20. And that was it. That was it. My, my, my life changed for good. This beautiful girl. She was a, a prodigal daughter. And she changed my life in many ways. But the scripture that she shares with me, that scripture that she shares with me when she first met me, something clicked on my mind. I never own a, a Bible in my life since I met her. I never have a Bible with me, never. We never as a family have a Bible in our house. But uh, when my wife shared this Psalm 23 with me, I read the, I read the, uh, the chapter many times. And she says, you, you need to memorize that. And I memorized it right away. But at the same time, I was, I was reading, and I go like, oh, my gosh. Who is this shepherd? Who is this shepherd? What are these scriptures saying? What are they talking about? What is it they're talking about? But my life... It started with a new beginning. When I, I got my first Bible, my, my wife bought me my first Bible, and I started reading the Bible. And we started looking for a church. We find a church. We start attending a church. All this in Santa Ana, California. We start attending a church. We start like serving here, serving over there. My wife, my wife started going to like a, a school of ministry, and I was a little jealous because I have no time because I have to work, 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 right? That was my job. But when I had the time, when I had the time, a few years later, I went even to a Bible college because I wanted to become a pastor. That was the call from, from the Lord to my heart. I wanted to become a pastor. And I went to the, this Bible study for a couple years. And I was very open in that time. I was very open to whatever, Lord. I said, whatever, Lord, whatever you want to do with this life, do it whatever you want to do. I'm open. Tell me what to do. You know, I was like the, uh, like the prophet of Isaiah when he says in Isaiah 6, 8. Isaiah 6, 8 says, then I heard the Lord asking, whom shall I send as a messenger to these people? Who will... Go for us, I say, 
here I am, send me. I was really amazed myself that those same exact words came out of my mouth. I says, Lord, here I am. What's in me, Lord? I might have nothing to give you. I might, you know, because I was thinking of my past. I was thinking of those years. But I said, Lord, if there is anything, if there is anything in my life that you can use, use it for your glory. And those are the words that came out of my mouth. And I told my wife that in 2003, um, two years prior to that, I said, honey, I think we need to move to Colorado. And I, think, and, and I was telling her, and she says, you're crazy because there is snow, it snows over there. You know, it's a lot, she doesn't like the snow. And she says, but I, I think that's where God wants us to be in Colorado. And I remember that, and we prayed for, for, for a long time. And finally, in 2003, we came to Colorado. We came as a family. As a family, there was five of us, including one nephew. They, we adopted him as a part of our family. We all came together to Colorado in 2003. We came together to plant a church. We were church planters. We moved to Colorado, and we, we were ready to go, you know, ready to go to plant a church in, in Castle Rock, Colorado. And you know what? When, I moved to, with, uh, when we landed in, in Castle Rock, I, I started looking around, and I go like, where are the Hispanics? I don't see a lot of Hispanics around here, right? Because that's what I was looking for, because we speak Spanish. I mean, that was, the, the church was going to be in Spanish. And I see nobody. I'm like, oh, my gosh, Lord. I think this time really, really, I don't think it was, that was the right, you know, trip. You know, I think we should go somewhere else. But anyways, we were there for nine years in Castle Rock, nine years. And we had the blessing, you know, to, to, to see how everything was developed. And we, uh, we, finally, we have a little congregation in Castle Rock. And after nine years to be there, uh, we called the church in Santa Ana in California and said, hey, we have plenty of people now. Send a pastor, you know. And they did send a pastor. And so he's still there right now. He's still, um, you know, in, in, with that little group over there. He's still working, you know, in that group. And so I was telling my wife, okay, now, now what is for us? And I, and I asked the Lord again. He says, Lord, what is next for us? What is it that you have in store for us? Why you move us to Colorado? I mean, we did that. But now what is next, Lord? And I remember in California when I was a truck driver. I was a truck driver for many years in California. And I listened to the radio. I listened to, uh, to all the pastors from Calvary Chapel. You know, I, I listened to Roll Reese. I listened to Greg Glory. I listened to all the Southern California pastors over there. And I learned, I learned so much from them. But I never went to a Calvary, uh, Calvary Church or Calvary Chapel Church. I never went to one of those over there. But uh, after we finished with this and this work in Castle Rock, we started visiting uh, Cal Calvary Chapel Castle Rock. We went over there with Pastor Day Love. You know, we went a few times over there, and we start praying, Lord, where do, you want to go? where do you want us to do now, Lord? Where do you want us to do? And I remember in, in, in those a couple times that we went, we just start praying about it, praying about it. Lord, is it here, Lord? Is it here where you want us to be? And I remember one time that I was leaving. Uh, Pastor Day Love usually stands at the door with people go by, you know, say, bye, have a good day. And he shakes hands. You know, remember those days when they used to shake hands and everything? Uh, and, and so... Uh, we, 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 I was leaving and I go like, Pastor Dave, how about a Spanish church? And I was just walking out and he's like, that's a good idea. I would love to have a, a Spanish church in my congregation. That was he says, he says those words when I was leaving, right? And I was thinking, huh, maybe he's here. Maybe he's right here where you want us, Lord, right? We stay in Castle Rock, I guess. We start another group in Castle Rock. So... I don't remember if it was like two or three more Sundays. Um, we went back to Castle Rock, um, Calvary Chapel. And that, that weekend, that weekend, Pastor Dalo was in Israel with, with, you know, with a group of people in Israel. And they have a guest teacher. And guess who came? Pastor Ed. Pastor Ed went that night. And when he shared his message... After a little while, he was standing on the front like always Pastor Ed does and pray for people. And I remember I told my wife, let's go talk to him. Um, maybe he, you know, he can pray for us and see what are we going to do. 
And I, I approached the pastor Ed, me and my wife, we went, and we mentioned to him, you know, uh, who we were and everything. And I says, we were looking for something in Spanish, Pastor Ed. And he's like, hmm, I have a group in, Cal in Calvary Church and Calvary Chapel Aurora in Spanish. That's what he says to me. I go like, really? Yes, I have a group over there. I'll get back to you. I go like, who, who, he's not going to call me back. You know, I, that's what I was thinking. But he did. He did call me back. And he says, here's the information, Sergio. Go talk to them. But you're all welcome if, if the Lord is leading you to come over here. So we came to, um, to this church in 2012. And we spent like a, a year and a half or so. Um, and my overseer back then, Pastor Jason Aston, he asked me, so what is it, Sergio? What is it for this ministry? What is it that the Lord puts you in your heart for this ministry? Isn't it? He, is, is here where he wants you? And so remember those weeks when we used to pray for like three or four days and as, a, as a church? And we, we were praying that, that week, I remember. And, um, and I approached to Pastor Jason afterwards, and I said, listen, this is what the scripture the Lord gave me in these four days that we're praying and fasting. And he gave me this verse in Acts 13.2. Acts 13, 2, it says like this, and in NLT also. One day, as these men were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit says, appoint Barnabas and Saul for the special work to which I have called them. That was it. That was the answer that we were waiting for. And I told my wife that. He says, honey, this is our home church. This is going to be our home church, and we're going to serve in the Hispanic, with the Hispanics over here. I was very excited. I was very excited. And, and she, too, she was very excited. She says, well, as long as you drive from Castle Rock to Aurora every single time, I'm okay with it, right? And that's why, that's why we're here. That's how we got here. I mean, I got so much things to tell you in my testimony, but this is when like, I went to, the, to do the specifics in my life. Those just the specifics in my life. Because tonight, I'm sure you came to hear the word of God, right? And I want to I share three points with you tonight before we head out. Because I know, I know this is what God put on my heart tonight for, you, for everybody. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 24 and 29. We're going to go there. I just want to give a little of a context of that. For the Jews and for the Gentiles, preaching the cross or preaching Christ crucified, for them it was like nonsense. All nonsense. For the Jews it was like a stumbling block. For the Greeks, it was foolish. And here's again my favorite phrase in, in uh, verse 24 of 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Verse 24. It says, But... To those called by God to salvation, both Jews and Gentiles, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. This foolish plan of God is wiser than wisest of the human plans. And God's weakness is stronger than the greatest of human strength. Remember, dear brothers and sisters, that few of you were wise in the world's eyes or powerful and, or wealthy when God called you. Instead, God chose things that the world considers foolish in order to shame those who think they are wise. And he chose things that are powerless to shame those who are powerful. God chose things despised by the world. Things count as nothing at all and use them to bring to nothing what the world considers important. Verse 29, as a result, no one can ever boast in the presence of God. Powerful scripture. God changed my life in a way that I says, Lord, Lord, I don't want to be like my dad. I don't want to be like my dad. I want to be, I want to be a good example for, for the children, if you give me children. I want to be a good example for them. I want them to know that I love them. 
I want them to know that you love them and that you have a plan for their lives too. That's what I want, Lord. That's what my wife and I were praying for. And my kids, over the years, if, you, if you've never been in a Hispanic congregation, man, it's a lot of work, man. It's a lot of work. Like, we go from one event to another event and another event, and then we have weekends. I mean, it, it were like busy all the time, all the time. And we were dragging our kids everywhere we go, with it, you know, when they were little. We got like a, like a, a prayer meeting, so we go with our kids, you know. They were little and everything. We lay them on the chairs, and they sleep in there, and we're praying to God to, you know, to seek it Him. They see it all. My kids saw it all, everything, everything. But you know what is the reward when you invest time in your kids like that? You know what is the reward when they grow up, as, as the proverb says? They don't go in a different direction. They stay in that direction. They might go in another, in another direction, but the Lord once again put them back in the right direction. Because he has a plan for them. And tonight, I asked Pastor Ian, hey, brother, there is any how that, that my son can play the drums and I think I can play the guitar. Um, my daughter can sing. I just want to thank God for the family that he gave me to praise him back. And, 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 and I, he's like, yo, bro, go for it. Go for it. Always Pastor Ian is, I, I want to be like Pastor Ian. Man, he's so kind and nice and got a good heart. But tonight, at the end of the service, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna sing this song. Because, because of this. Because those that God, that God called for salvation, both Jews and Gentiles, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. See, when the world were thinking that my life, it was wasted, God was thinking something else. But God, it says verse 24, to those who are called by God. And that's why I am who I am, not because of who I was. I am who I am, but what Christ is in my life. And I'm sure you got the same. You feel the same in your life. But God says this verse to those called by God for salvation. When we think that it's over, God says it's not over yet. This is just the beginning. When we think that we're an outcast that nobody likes, God says, I love you. I send my son to die for you at the cross. Those things came to my mind. And always, always we go back to those famous verses of Jeremiah 29, 11, where it says, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. There are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and hope. Those are the plans from God. Those are the plans for your life, for my life. You know what I was dreaming when I was 16 in Mexico? I want to be a professional soccer player. I was dreaming that. I don't know if I was, I was good enough or not, but I, I made it to the tryouts for a professional team. I was 16 years old. I was playing in those teams, and I was so close, and I was like so excited to go all, all the way to be a professional soccer player. And I go to my older brothers, and I say, hey, I think they like me. Maybe there is a chance. And he's like, nope, forget about that crazy dream. Forget about that crazy dream. Don't even think about it. Don't even think about it. And now that I'm thinking, and it wasn't my family who says no, I don't think so. But it was God because as we read in Jeremiah, because he has different plans for all of us, for all of us. It's a different plan for my life. That's why I call the first point, but God. Point number two, verse 26. Remember, remember, dear brothers and sisters, that few of you were wise in the world's eyes or powerful or wealthy when God called you. Oh, we know that, right? We all know that. We know who we were without Christ in our lives. We know where we were without Christ in our lives. I feel that I was despised by this world, rejected, 
no wanted, but Christ wants so much more from my life. And so does he wants so much more from your life. To be able to say like the apostle, you know, the apostle Paul always, wherever he was going, he was sharing his testimony. That's exactly, that's exactly what I'm trying to do it tonight. Sharing a testimony that how God can change a life who for the world it was wasted, it was nothing. But for God it's important. And he, he, can, he can place you in a place that you never imagined. Because God, because God changed everything for his purpose and for his glory, always. In point number three, in verse 29, as a result, no one can ever boast in the presence of God. Number point, point number three is the work of Christ in us. The work of Christ in us. I am who I am because of him. You are who you are because of him. Because what Jesus did at the cross because for us, the cross is not a stumbling block. For us, the cross is not a foolish thing. You know what is the cross for us? It's the very power of God. It's the finished work of God. It's the victory of God in our lives. That's what the cross represents for us as believers. I want to close with this. I hope I don't shame my kids because, you know, this is so, this is so I don't know. I remember Moses. Moses, he, he, he wasn't able to talk, right? He was stuttered, right? He wasn't able to talk very well, right? And who sent Moses to his life? Aaron, right? The spoke for him. Remember, um, remember Apostle Paul? He has so many things healthy-wise probably, you know, in his life. And who sent with Paul in most of his trips? Luke, the doctor, right? My Lord is so good on me, you know? I'm, I, he's so good to us, and he gave it to me a daughter who is a speech language pathologist. So she's teaching me how to speak better, you know. So imagine that he he, he gave me all the help that I need, right? She's like she's like okay, he, my my daughter says last night, she says, "Do you want to go over to your your notes and stuff?" Is nope. I think I got it. You know, I think I got it because I know if I go through my notes, she'll probably correct something, right? I want to close with this. When I'm looking back as an immigrant who came to this beautiful country, I was looking for a better life. I was looking for a new direction in my life. But even in this country, you can be in this country and you can be dragging, you can be dragging your past or you can be still running from everything. That was my case. I was still running from everything, even even being here in the United States. I was running from everything, from everything. And I know now, I know now, the way my family was thinking when I left Mexico, when I was 18 years old. My family says, okay, that's it for Sergio. He's going to America, they end on his life. Most of them think like that, or they were thinking like that. But America for me, in this country, it was a new life for me. And not because of what I found in America. It's because of what I found in the person of Jesus Christ who changed my heart, who changed my destiny, not only here but in the future also. That's why. In fact, when I, go, when I went back to Mexico with my family, with my two kids, we went back to Mexico. I remember on a vacation a long time ago. The good news was the surgeon is still alive. And Sergio got really good news for everybody. Very good news. And I shared the gospel with my family. You know what? Even, even I took my son with me. I want to know who my dad was. I was mid-30s. And I told my mom, who is my dad? I want to know who he is. And he gave me direction where he lives. And I went and looked for him. He was an old man already. And I, I saw him. And I said, I didn't hate you. I didn't hate you for what you did to me. But I come here tonight, or I came here today with you to share a good news to you. I want to pray with you. And I shared the gospel with my, my dad. 
and I pray for him. Because when you come to Jesus, when he cleans your life, he take all the bitterness that is in your heart. He took everything away. I, I, all I got for my daddy was love. That's all I have for my dad in that moment. And I pray with him. And, and, and the result of my, of my conversion, my sister became a believer later with her children. My mom, before she passed, she became a believer also. My older brother, uh, his wife passed last year. But before she passed, also, she, she believed in Jesus Christ. My older brother, he came to visit us um, last year. And he came to one service in Sugracia. And one night, we were in our, our uh, dinner table talking about the things that we do here. And, and that night, he received also the Lord as his Savior. It's unbelievable. <laughs> unbelievable. I want to ask my... Uh, the music, uh, musicians to come over, please, because I want to I finish with this. If life changed, if, if Christ changed my life, I'm sorry, if, if Christ changed my life for a purpose, God also changed your life for a purpose. There is a purpose in your, in your life. There is something that God is asking you to do, maybe, maybe for many months already. Maybe he's calling you. But you know what is the first step? The first step is to, 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 to understand that we, we are sinners and we need, we need Christ in our life as our Lord and Savior. God loves everybody. He, he loves everybody, even an outcast like me. He loves everybody and he wants to do amazing, amazing work in your world, in your, in your heart tonight. I know, I know, I know. You're probably thinking, oh, my gosh, i probably going to get only half of this message tonight. But I hope you get the message. The message is this, that Christ died for you for your sins. And he is here tonight. He's, he's, he wants to touch your life. To those who are listening on the radio, he wants to touch your life. To those who are watching online, he wants to do something. He wants to do a mighty work in your life. That's the message that we care. That's the message that is more important than any other messages that we can give. That Christ loves you and he died for you. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we just thank you. Thank you so much for giving us the blessing to know you, Lord. Thank you for dying for us. Thank you for taking our place in that cross. My prayer tonight, Lord, that these words of your scripture can touch somebody's life tonight, can change somebody's life tonight, just like you changed mine when I came to this country. Yeah, I probably got all the things that I... I was looking for materialistic things, but it's still not satisfying my life. But I find you, and you satisfy my life like nothing else, Lord. And I'm asking you tonight, Lord, please use this message to save somebody and so they can know that the life is in Jesus Christ. I don't know you tonight with your eyes closed in praying. I don't know you tonight. I don't know where you're at tonight. But if you're one of them that haven't even received Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you've been looking and you've been wanting to do that, this is the night for you. Give your life to Jesus. If you're here in the, in the, in, in the building tonight, I want to ask you if you can stand, if you want Jesus in your life. And to those on the radio, I want to ask you the same thing. And to those who are watching online, search your heart. Search your heart. And I pray that you can hear the voice that is calling you. It's calling you to a new life, a new relationship. That's why Jesus Christ came to this earth. To give us a new direction. 
that direction to heaven. That's what he wants for you. Anybody here tonight? Maybe God is calling you tonight. If you're listening somewhere, search in your heart and just pray. Just pray with me this prayer. It says, Lord Jesus, I'm so thank you that you went to the cross for me. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me, and I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Help me to walk in this world. Help me. Help me, Lord, to be faithful. And even when I'm unfaithful, Lord, just be with me, Lord. Be my Lord of my life. I want to give you all I got, Lord, for you, for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. We pray that you've been encouraged by this Bible study delivered live from the sanctuary of Calvary Aurora. For prayer or a copy of this study, call us at 877-30-GRACE. That's 877-304-7223. Or visit us online at calvaryaurora.org. Be blessed as you worship Jesus this week.